Okay, Mr. Cohn, for our audience, it might be useful to start off with a brief summary of the January events of 2022 and their immediate impact on Kazakhstan's political development. But please unmute yourself. Still muted. There we go. Uh, greetings and uh, thank you for having me. Um, the events in Kazakhstan came as a surprise to everybody, including the leadership of Kazakhstan. Uh, however, uh, these were accumulations of structural problems uh, that were going on in Kazakhstan for decades. Uh, while Kazakhstan definitely had uh, the most successful pathway of development in Central Asia uh, in comparison with its neighbors, um, and I would add with Russia, uh, nevertheless, uh, in terms of political um, mechanisms, uh, there were uh, things that were lacking. There was frustration of ordinary Kazakhs. Uh, and the uh, events of Bloody January, the tragic events that left over 200 people uh, dead and thousands arrested, um, were a function of the uh, feedback loops in the society that were clogged. Uh, they were a function of widespread corruption um, and uh, of the inability of the state security uh, system to identify um, radicals, identify elements that may have had uh, Islamist connections, um, and the networks that were connected with opposition outside of the country. Um, as a result, um, there were uncontrolled riots uh, that became uh, violent very quickly. And there was an, an initial failure of the security um, services and police to uh, stop the violence. Uh, President Tokayev moved fast. Uh, he uh, fired the then head of the security services, Karim Masimov, uh, and he replaced President Nazarbayev at the head of the National Security Council. Uh, in the ensuing months, uh, over a year since the events. President Tokayev consolidated his power. Um, they abolished the law uh, on Yelbasi, the uh, leader of the nation, that the law that was passed during the transition from uh, Nazarbayev to Tokayev. Uh, he um, uh, zeroed out Nazarbayev's power. Nazarbayev admitted on national television he is nothing anymore, nothing then. Um, a pensioner uh, and a process of repatriating some of the funds that were exfiltrated from the country uh, and uh, getting rid of some of the cronies of the Nazarbayev era has begun. Is that enough? <laughs> I'm not so sure because uh, the la latest poll that I saw suggested that up to 44% of Kazakhs believe that they may see the repeat of these um, events of the unrest. And at the same time, I would like to indicate that for the United States, as we witnessed with the visit by Secretary Blinken, Kazakhstan and Central Asia remain a key strategic region. Between aggressive Russia and the rising China, I cannot stress enough how important it is for the United States to remain engaged, to remain a partner, uh, not to be punitive, uh, to develop uh, the investments that were started in the 1990s by massive invest investment in oil. And now I believe it's time to invest in rare earths, in, te in technology, and in other uh, branches of the industry in Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and other states of Central Asia, so that we do not cede this vital region to the ambition of imperialist Russia and uh, aggressive China. I think I'll stop here. Thank you. Ooh, Mr. Cohn, Secretary of State Blinken was just in Astana for a meeting of the C5 plus one. 
And it's wonderful to see the C5 plus one convening in Central Asia. And he also met with President Takayev. And from there, he traveled to Tashkent to see President Mirziyoyev. What is the significance of this trip against the backdrop of Moscow's aggression in Ukraine? Please unmute yourself. We want to hear you. It's it's a question for me, right? Oh no no this for, this this is for Ariel Cohn. We will come back okay. to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I do believe that um, preventing Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan um, from violating sanctions on Russia is high on Mr. Blinken's agenda. But at the same time, I would say that because we did not have a presidential visit, a, a participation of President Biden in the next C plus five one or even before the scheduled C5 plus one to demonstrate that we uh, put our money where our mouth is, that this is truly a vital region for the following reason. The United States, Japan, Australia, and other allies are very concerned of about security in what we call the uh, Asia Pacific or Indo-Pac, in Indo-Pacific. That is the region that China is facing east, but China is also facing west and it's facing west in Central Asia. It's also the region that was referred as Russia's soft underbelly. It is also a region where um, Islamic um, front of Turkestan, whatever it's called, the uh, offshoot of Al-Qaeda, uh, is still active, as well as other uh, terrorist uh, uh, radical organizations. So I do believe that if Mr. Blinken could work uh, on a number of issues, including political reform, including creating the climate for uh, further U.S. and Western investment, especially in the era when we're concerned about the uh, high dependence on the supply chains from China, uh, about sanctions, at the same time, uh, we uh, should not be uh, abandoning our presence in Central Asia. There were many, many C plus five, uh, C five plus one meetings since the time of Secretary Kerry, who initiated it together with his Central Asian counterparts. I do believe it is a time to upgrade this to a presidential meeting, maybe do it at the UN, maybe do it in the region. Probably the stronger signal is if President Biden stops there on one of his trips. But uh, we need to be involved on the ground with investment, with security cooperation, and send a strong signal to our partners in Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and elsewhere in the region. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, intriguing idea of upgrading the C5 plus one. I would support that. Uh, Ambassador, can I just add a couple of sentences Go ahead. Uh, following? Yeah. Uh, there's something called the middle corridor. And the middle corridor in the uh, Silk Road is a connection uh, from the Central Asian countries via the Caucasus uh, to the world oceans. We know that Kazakhstan is landlocked, Uzbekistan is double landlocked. And in the past, Russia played a role of a transit country. Now it becomes more problematic. Yes, Kazakhstan is still exporting 80% of its oil, its, its lifeline, uh, via Russia uh, to the Black Sea. But the development of uh, the Middle Corridor is becoming absolutely vital, both for Central Asian countries, as well as um, uh, for the EU. And uh, Ms. van der Leyen, the uh, president of the EU, uh, visited, signed agreements, and as the world is seized with the uh, decarbonization, uh, removing um, 
CO2 from the emission mix. Uh, it is absolutely vital uh, to work with Kazakhstan uh, to uh, take advantage of its massive uh, uranium uh, resources. Kazakhstan is second uh, largest producer, probably the first largest country in the world in terms of reserves. Uh, this is no joke. Uh, at this point, Kazakhstan is exporting uranium uh, to form to format uh, the uh, elements of um, um, uh, nuclear power station, the, the fuel elements, the TVELs, uh, in Russia. Uh, in the future, I see Kazakhstan moving up the value chain uh, and uh, manufacturing its own fuel elements, for example. But at the same time, while we talk about all these important issues, uh, domestic policy, democracy, etc., we cannot forget that Kazakhstan is sandwiched between Russia and China, and that Russian imperialism is still vastly influencing Russians point, the, the Russian point of view and Russian policy. Uh, there is a beginning of a debate in the profession, uh, in the post-Soviet studies, whatever you call it, uh, of how we were missing the imperial paradigm uh, of Russian foreign policy in the post-Soviet era. As someone who wrote his book called Russian Imperialism, I'm, I'm glad to report not everybody in the profession was missing it, but we need to be realistic. Kazakhstan and other countries of Central Asia need to keep in mind uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the legacy of the imperial powers in the region, including Russia and China. And when Kazakhstan is moving to pursue independence, to develop regional security, they also need to look uh, behind their shoulder and see what Moscow is, set, is doing, because Moscow uh, issued a number of threatening declarations about Kazakhstan's territorial Ariel, integrity. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to get more content like this.